Marina Mabry is a tremendous competitor. If she's on your team, then you love her. But if you're playing against her, then she's an irritant and the player that opposing fans love to hate. Back to Sports presents the 10 things you should know about Marina Mabry. Watch the video and it'll give you a better understanding of her playing style and where she got her passion from. Number 10, a basketball competitive family. Marina Mabry's parents, Roy and Patty, were athletic but did not play college sports. They had five children with Marina being the middle child. The driveway basketball hoop was a scene of uber competitive games that were all played all year round, even if it was freezing in winter or scorching hot in summer. Their driveway was narrow, which basically meant they could only play one-on-one -on -one basketball, which usually led to the older siblings giving it to the younger ones. Insults, elbows, water bottles all got hurled across the driveway. Maria's younger sister, Dara, outlined what was at stake in these games. If you lost, you were going to hear about it the rest of the day. The winner always rubbed it in, and the loser had no one but himself or herself to blame. Their mom, Patty, who used to ref some of the games, in the driveway summed it up best when she said, We are not a family that holds back. Number 9. Mom's 9-11 near miss. Like all Americans, the 9-11 terrorist attacks had a big impact on Marina Mabry's life. Mabry recounted her 9-11 experience, saying, Her teacher told her preschool class that they were being sent home early because something had happened at the World Trade Center. Mabry's mother, Patty, worked there. I was losing it, obviously, Mabry said. My older brother and sister were crying, too. We all thought for sure Mom was gone. I think my grandma came and picked us up. Up. My dad worked on Wall Street, and he came home too. A few hours later, Patty Mabry walked in the door at home. It turned out she had left work briefly that morning to go across the street to a retail store to buy a present for Marina's birthday. I just remember when she walked in the door, we thought, oh my god, because we all thought we would never see her again. I couldn't have been happier. Number 8. The Mabrys filled the local high school's trophy case. Marina Mabry was raised in Belmar, New Jersey, which she says is close to her heart, as she never really traveled places to work out with trainers, as she stayed in Belmar and did everything with those close around her and in her inner circle. She and her two sisters filled their local high school's trophy case as each of them won two TOC titles. Marina credits her elder sister, Michaela, for starting the family legacy when she took a chance and decided to transfer from the larger St. John's Venery to the small local school. Manasquan. Marina says her younger sister, Dara, is a hometown hero as she went to Manasquan all four years. The Mabrys are no stranger to the critics. Michaela was questioned by some when she initially decided to transfer to a small local school. Marina got an earful when she pinballed from Manasquan to Point Pleasant Beach and then back to Manasquan. Her disdain for the critics shows when she says, when you reach a certain level of excellence, people want to take you down. I think it's a certain level of jealousy. Number seven, the sisters. Marina admits to being very competitive with her older sister, Michaela, while growing up, saying, I always wanted to beat her. This was fueled when she was younger, as she was always known as Michaela's sister. However, the relationship grew much stronger when Marina followed Michaela to Notre Dame. Michaela was a senior, and Marina credits Michaela for her early success as a freshman year, as she helped keep her steady and level-headed. Marina admits that the family thinks she's crazy for how intense she can be, which results in her being very hard on herself. Michaela says that Marina has a better overall basketball game than hers, but jokes they both know that she's a better shooter. Michaela went into coaching after she finished playing and returned to Notre Dame as an assistant coach in 2019. Just like Michaela helped Marina, Marina helped her younger sister develop as a basketball player as well. Her younger sister, Dara, recounted, She was a senior in high school and I was a freshman, and she would wake me up at 5 in the morning and we would go to the gym before school. Dara went on to say, She took me under her belt and she took me everywhere with her until I was able to go on my own. Marina also passed on her toughness. Dara told a story about how when they were playing together in high school and she got fouled hard and hit her head. All of our teammates, our coaches, even parents up in the stands were shouting, oh my gosh Dara, are you okay? Not Marina. Marina came up to me and said, you better get the F up right now. Your head's going to hurt later, but you need to make these free throws because we need to win. If you miss it, it's totally fine, but you're not going to. Get up and make the effing free throws and we can worry about it later. That was her her comfort. Her comfort wasn't like anybody else's. Number six, the Notre Dame career. Even though Michaela went to Notre Dame, it was not inevitable that Marina would follow in her footsteps, even though she had grown close to head coach Muffet McGraw. Most of the nation's top programs offered Marina a scholarship, and she had seriously considered creating her own legacy elsewhere. However, she wound up creating her own legacy at Notre Dame, as she was a key component on the team that survived a rash of injuries and won the 2018 National Championship. The team was decimated as four players on the team suffered season-ending injuries. However, this 
This wound up creating a mentally tough team, which would fight back when down. The Irish overcame a 23-point deficit to beat Tennessee, and then came back from 15 points down to win the national championship game. During the season, Mabry moved into the point guard role and was the vocal leader of the team. Notre Dame coach Muffin McGraw praised Mabry, saying, She is so feisty and so competitive, just never ever quits. Number five, Mabry's friendship with Ariki Agumawale. The friendship between Marina and Arike was very surprising as their personalities are so different as Marina is type A, ball of sarcasm, and Arike is laid back. Gumawale and Mabry hit it off well enough during their first year in South Bend. Familiar, friendly, but rarely around one another when away from the team. But then came the offseason and Agumawale needed a workout partner. She knew that Mabry was always game for more time in the gym. The hours in the gym forged respect and friendship. However, living together wasn't part of the plan, but this came about as Agumawale had a place off campus and needed a roommate. Mabry, just prior to the start of her junior year, decided she'd rather not live on campus. That's how they wound up together, with Mabry doing the cooking and Agumawale handling the dishes. They slogged through homework together as they both majored in business management and attempted to binge watch TV shows, which would be derailed by Agumawale's falling asleep. Sleep also caused issues on the road, as Mabry once got so frustrated with Agumawale's snoring that she threw a pillow at her, but the friendship endured with Mabry saying, I would have brought earmuffs, earplugs, headpiece, just not to switch my roommate. Number four, my hoops is my kitchen. In 2008, after Notre Dame Fighting Irish captured the national championship over Mississippi State, Mabry published the following tweet. To all the male women's basketball haters, y'all can get in my kitchen and make us a sandwich now. Thanks. By the way, don't make Mabry a hot dog as she hates them. After publishing the tweet, she was then inspired to make a Marina Mabry This Is My Kitchen t-shirt, which had a large picture of the basketball court on the front of it. Mabry created the t-shirt in response to the sexist online comments that women basketball players receive. Number three, drafted by the Sparks. After finishing her college career, Mabry was drafted 19th overall in the 2019 WNBA draft by the Los Angeles Sparks. She described her rookie year as a roller coaster ride with ups and downs. Mabry averaged only 11 minutes per game game as the Sparks were loaded with veterans like Candace Parker, Nikkei Agumake, and Chelsea Gray. Mabry just tried to soak up as much knowledge from coaches and players as possible. But she did admit it was a humbling experience saying, going from playing 37 minutes a game and essentially being able to do whatever and then being a rookie and not possibly entering the game really takes a shot at your ego. Mabry explained how she adjusted to this saying, I feel like you have to look inside and ask if this is what you really want and believe that you still belong there and really believe in yourself. That was hard for me, but once I figured it out and I accepted it and understand that I still have a chance to make an impact on the league. Number two, Kobe's influence. Marina Mabry was devastated by the death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. After his death, she spoke about how Bryant sincerely cared about women's basketball and Mabry's success. The Sparks guard at the time was one of the many players whom the Lakers legend helped, offering motivation and training tips. Mabry got to know Bryant when Bryant let her know that he liked the This Is My Kitchen shirts as he wanted his daughter and her team to play with that attitude. Bryant promoted the t-shirts on Instagram. Thank you for the shirts and the message. We love everything it stands for, his caption read. Brian continued to reach out to Mabry and offered her some surprising advice. With Mabry saying, when we would talk about getting better and what I need to do, I thought he would say, work on finishing at the rim and a better mid-range off the dribble, etc. But instead he said, run. Just keep running and running until you're in the best shape of your life. Brian also shared stories of his own rookie experiences to help Mabry navigate her first professional season. Mabry went on to say, I learned a lot of things from him in such a short time, and I'm so disappointed that I won't have the opportunity to hear his words of encouragement and train with him on things he told me about when we talked. Following his death, Mabry wrote the following message. I'm heartbroken that I won't get to see Gigi Bryant, Peyton Chester, and Alicia Atbali grow on and off the court but I'm excited to see their teammates and all the little Mambas continue to carry out their legacy. Number one, the Dallas trade and building her game. After a challenging first year with the Sparks, Mabry got a fresh start when she was traded to the Wings, which allowed her to reconnect with her best friend and former Notre Dame teammate, Ariki Agumawale. Her game blossomed in Dallas as she got more game time and she just got better. Mabry put it more bluntly when she said, I got in shape so I could play with the best athletes in the world. The transformation of her game began with a steady workout regime of Pilates, bar workouts, lifting weights, push-ups, chin-ups, running, up and down stairs, you name it, she did it all. She got stronger, quicker, and lost a lot of body fat. Next came the work on her skills, which included working on her mid-range game. Every day after practice for two weeks, Mabry completed 41 dribble-up pull-ups, 
42 dribble up pull ups, 40 off the bounce pull ups. This was in addition to the 500 shots she takes each off season off the gun. She also knew she had to improve her handle, and each day she spent eight minutes dribbling with her left hand, then her right hand, and then 16 minutes working on her crossovers. The results showed as her scoring increased from four points in her rookie campaign to double figures and her breaking into the wing starting lineup. We will leave the final word to Mabry, which I think explains her passion on the court. The first couple of years of your career are super important, so I just tried to look at the film and see what I needed to do to get better. And once I saw all of that, I wanted it so bad. There were countless people who said I'd never be able to play. I'm not good enough or fast enough. I could only shoot. I can't dribble. The list goes on and on. So I decided to put all that aside and believe in myself and bet on myself. And that's what I did. So the next time you see Marina Mabry get into a uh, stoush with another player, I hope this video gives you some context and who she is. Anyway, thanks so much for watching my video. If you like it, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. That's the best way to help this channel grow. Thank you so much.